The greatest need that people have in the church is to know who God is. You see, until we know who God is, we know nothing of ourselves. We can't even understand ourselves until we first understand who God is. It is in the light of understanding who God is that we are able to see and understand who I am. And we cannot even understand what our true needs are until we understand who God is. But as God has chosen to reveal Himself in His Word, it is in understanding who God is that everything else falls in place. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And it was God who said, let there be light. That is the exercise, the free exercise of His sovereign will. For He spoke and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. All that God has done to establish His creation, He has put everything into its rightful place. The planets, the galaxies, the sun, the stars, the earth, the dry land, the seas, the laws of gravity, the laws of morality, His Word, everything that God has put into place, it will never be altered, it will never be moved. God never has to go to His backup plan. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. As we see here in Exodus 15, 11, who is like you among the gods? And of course, it's a rhetorical question, and the answer is no one. And throughout Scripture, we will hear this over and over. There is no one like the Lord. Absolutely no one. We go on. His eternity, His self-existence, His immutability, His omnipotence, His omnipresence, His omniscience, His righteousness, all of those things are expressions of His holiness. There is none like the Lord. That glorious archangel in heaven whose glory is so great that it would explode our minds and our hearts if we caught just a glimpse of Him is no closer to being like God than the smallest microbe on the face of the earth. No one is like the God of Scripture. The sovereignty of God cannot be overrided. The authority of God cannot be checked. The floods do rise up against the Lord, but they cannot touch the sovereignty of Almighty God. So something is greater than, more than, the sounds of these waters, these floods, these waves pounding against the rocks. The proud efforts of man to resist and to overcome God more than that, at the end of verse 4, it says, The Lord on high is mighty. And we look around us at the strongest creatures that are. We know we cannot put our trust in them. And if that is all we had, we would be a miserable lot. But we have one who has us who is nothing like everything we know. He so far exceeds it. You see, that is why if you see me one day in an ash heap cutting the crust off my body with a broken cup, don't come and tell me ten ways to feel better about myself. Tell me about God. Tell me about a rock that is higher than I. Tell me about the one whose name is a strong tower and the righteous can run in there and be safe. Ask me what I know. Don't ask me what I feel about myself. Ask me what I know about God. Ask me what I know about His Word. Ask me what I know to be a verity that can deal with my soul. That's what I need. That's why you have to get yourself under the control of the Scriptures. That's why it is what we know the verities of the Scriptures, which then fuel our hearts and our emotions and lead us on.
the Lord descended in the cloud and stood there with him as he called upon the name of the Lord. Then the Lord passed by in front of him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness and truth, who keeps loving kindness for thousands, who forgives iniquity, transgression and sin, yet he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. His power is invincible. It is unconquerable. No one can resist God. No one can defeat God. All of His purposes are moving forward. He is invincible. He is unconquerable with the power that God has. And as for His outstretched hand, who can turn it back? Who's going to slap God's hand and, and turn it back? Even from eternity, I am He and there is none who can deliver out of my hand. I act and who can reverse it? And I will be their God and they will be my people. And you say, but Lord, that's Ezekiel, that you will dwell with them. Is it a promise that can be true? Go to the book of Revelation. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is among men and he will dwell among them and they shall be be his people and God himself will be among them and he will wipe away every tear from their eye and there will no longer be any death and it is happening because the darkness is passing away in your life if you are a Christian and the true light is shining the Lord reigns in an absolute way in every place in every person whether that person recognizes the reign of God or not. He reigns in this absolute way over nations and over nature, over events and over circumstances, over good people and over evil people, over prosperity and adversity, over it all the Lord reigns. He is clothed with majesty which speaks of regal splendor the Lord reigns he is clothed with majesty there is a regal splendor about the reign of Almighty God praise my soul the King of heaven to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Who like thee his praise should sing? You've been ransomed, you've been healed, you've been restored, you've been forgiven. You're looking away from yourself now, you're looking out unto Christ. And it is in this that we have something that fuels our praise. Shout it from the mountains. Let it tear your heart out of your breast. This is enough to propel a Christian into countless ages of piety. Look at this man, Jesus, and what he did. Our victor, our conqueror, our champion did what none of us could do. Give us a man who know the truth and who will declare the truth and who will stand with Athanasius and Polycarp and Calvin and Luther and Whitfield and Edwards and who will declare from the housetops that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. 
you are clothed with splendor and in majesty.